So welcome to this other tutorial, which is kind of similar to the last one I did. Uh, in this one, we're basically gonna fill up our database with data through an API, right? So we're gonna seed it uh, by going through an API. We're gonna use JSON parsing, and it's gonna be very, very quick. And it's really useful whenever you have a project as well, and you wanna fill it up with the, any API from Twitter or whatever, it's always useful to know how to do this. And it's really simple, surprisingly simple, I would say. So I went ahead and created a project and I also generated a scaffold. So I'm gonna show you what scaffold I have. Just did this so we can win some time. So first let me migrate it. Oops. Okay, so there's the schema. We got a post table which has a title, a username, votes, and the timestamps. Cool, cool, cool. Let's launch the server. Even though the app won't have anything, let's just check that everything is working fine for now. There we go. Cool. Nope. All right, so we can already go in our seats folder and we're gonna require three things. The first is JSON so that we can parse the content. The second is a REST client to access the API. And I always like to require open URI. Open URI. Okay, so this is the API URL that I got. I got it from a website called Hacker, Hacker News, sorry. And um, basically we're gonna go through two URLs, but first to access the second URL, we need to access the IDs, right? These are the IDs of the top stories posted on that website. Each one of these IDs, as attributes and they can be accessed through this URL. And you can see that the URL includes the ID.json. This means that we can basically interpolate it inside of the URL when we call our API. So let's go ahead with the first one, which is this one, obviously. And we assign it to a variable called URL. We're going to create a new variable called post IDs, where we're going to store all of the IDs that we open through this URL. So we open it, we pass as an argument the URL, and we read it. Now this post ID, this is what it contains, right? So we can have a look at it. Post IDs. Let's have a look in the terminal. So if we're in Ruby, and then db you can see that we have an array with all the ids so we want to parse this into json so we parse it into json and we're going to store it inside of a variable called posts which is the one that we're going to iterate through when we want to access every attribute of this array. So parse, this, these uh, methods that I'm calling are the syntax from the document, documentation that you can find on Ruby docs. Okay, I'm not making it up and I didn't, I'm not making it up and I didn't like find it on my own, I just read. So let's do 10 products, 10 posts, we're gonna pass a parameter, which is gonna be the index of every item in here, starting at zero, of course, one, two, et cetera, et cetera. So you probably know what we need to do next. We are gonna grab the, the ID of the 
post at its index. So what's happening here? We are creating a new variable called post ID and we are assigning it the value of, sorry, posts. Value of posts and the index. This index obviously is an iteration. So it's gonna go through each one of these and do the same thing for each one of them. So the next thing we need to do now that we actually grab the IDs and put it inside of post ID, post ID we want to take this ID and then call another API, make another API call with this URL and interpolate the ID inside of the URL so that we can access this. So it's really simple. It's almost the same thing. So let's copy this URL. a new variable called URL post. And this is the part that we want to be dynamic, right? So here, instead of putting a hard coded number, we're gonna pass the post ID, which is gonna change every time the loop, the loop runs. Post ID, there we go. So now we're opening the API URL and accessing it based on the ID we retrieved through here. In that case, the first one would be two, three, three, one, three, three, zero, seven. So what do we wanna do next? We wanna do the same thing, which is basically just open it. So post info is equal to open us the URL and we read and then we get the, we parse it and we store it in a variable called post parse uh, post info and almost at last we are going to create instances with for uh, the attributes of each one of the array's indexes. So we can create a variable called new post and we assign it the instance that we're gonna create. In that case, it's post.new. We can even do that for it. Wait. Remember what our schema has, a title, username, and votes. So we assign the title to uh, to what that's the question the url to what and the votes to what so it's really actually simple it's not a trick or anything you can see that this is a hash and how do you access a hash you access a hash by calling its key which will give you back the value so you just take the key names in, he in here, which are strings and not symbols, be careful. So you can see that by gives us the username. You can see that title gives us the title and URL gives us the URL. So since we stored that hash inside, inside of post, we can access it by calling the keys in here. So the first one is title. Second one is URL. The third one though is not votes. I think it has another name here. Yeah, score. So the third one is score. And give us back the total score. I'm missing a comma here. Okay, and that's actually it, guys. So let's try it out and see what happens. Let's run Rails db drop db create. Actually, I didn't put anything, so maybe we can just do Rails db seed. Ooh. 
not good. Cannot load such file, REST client. All right, I don't even think we use REST client, so. Let's try that again. So we get unknown URL for posts. How come? Because I did not include a URL actually. Why did I put URL? I don't know. We put username. I am so sorry about this. And here we call buy because we actually even went over it. So the key is buy. I'm just used because I had a similar project. So I got confused. I'm sorry about that. One last time. Take some time, but hopefully it will work. It's really taking a long time, isn't it? What is happening? I don't think anything happened. Yes, it did, cool. So you can see that we grabbed everything from the API and stored it inside our database. So how amazing is that? Except for the part where I wanted to include a URL, which is something we don't have. It's pretty amazing, I think. You can play around guys with any other API. The concept is the same. I was requiring REST API here, uh, REST client before, which is another way to basically just open the URL. You can use open URI and just do it this way. It works perfectly fine. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe.